Hello. Hello. How are you? Excellent. Thanks. How about you? Good. Thank you for doing this. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I love sharing this work. <laughs> Grateful for the opportunity. Great. All right. Well, you guys had like 5,000 things you wanted to talk about. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> always the case. Let's get to it. Oh, quick question. Absolutely. Which of you is Don and which of you is Don? <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that. Uh, by the way, I'm Don. Nice okay. to be fed. <laughs> yeah, and I'm Karen. Okay. <laughs> So welcome everyone to another episode of Spiritual Superpower. We have a great episode for you today. We have with us Brad Yates. He is an author, right? He's an actor, mm -hmm. but I think he's best known as a hypnotherapist and EFT master. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Anything else you'd like to add to that, Brad? I not that I can say in public, no. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I've been known to be a lot of things, but you know, the main, uh, the main things, yeah. Certainly, certainly now the uh, the tapping tapping on YouTube is what I'm most known for. Right, and you have over a thousand videos on YouTube. Over a thousand videos, yeah. Well, you know, us doing uh, YouTube videos now that just seems like epic <laughs> you know how much work it is you know mm -hmm. so it surprises me somebody just yesterday i was like a thousand how did that happen <laughs> yeah. now it took a long time it's right. yeah. over a decade but <laughs> wow well i've been watching your videos i think since 2014 15 and i really got into them in 2016 and i use them a lot with my patients they often get your videos or your link the link to your to your website and to your videos as their home care. So um, thank you. I, that, that is one of the greatest compliments that I receive is when people tell me that they refer my videos to their uh, patients and clients as homework. Definitely. Yeah. 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 They're so helpful. But why don't we talk about what emotional freedom technique is or EFT yeah. or tapping so that people understand what we're talking about? Just in case anyone's watching, going, what the yeah. heck are they talking about? <laughs> tapping. He's a tap dancer. So tapping. Uh, originally known as EFT or emotional freedom techniques. Well, it's literally a process of tapping with our fingertips on places around the face and torso primarily. And for those of you who are new to it, I totally get that it's like, what? <laughs> it looks a little strange. There's a really good reason why we do it though. It is one of the simplest, quickest forms of stress relief. And it calms down the, the stress response that happens when the part of our brain called the amygdala uh, perceives a threat and we go into fight or flight. That's what we call the sympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system is when the body and mind say, okay, threat's over. We can calm down and get back to our normal functioning. And we can start thinking from our prefrontal cortex where our rational thinking is. And the tapping expedites that process. It allows us to calm down quickly it's, it's based on acupuncture. So for thousands of years in Chinese medicine, they've said there's a flow of energy through the body along these pathways that are called meridians. And when this energy is flowing naturally, we experience our natural state of health and well-being, physically and emotionally. And when we don't have that natural state, that natural flow, when it gets stuck, we don't feel so good. We don't think as clearly. We don't make the best choices. That has all kinds of unfortunate consequences in our lives. So in traditional Chinese medicine, the doctor would stick needles in these key points to stimulate that healthy flow of energy. And we're just doing that with the tapping. And we have a growing body of scientific evidence validating this process in terms of lowering the stress hormone cortisol. So we can literally see, wow, stress is being lowered significantly. We have fMRI studies showing changes in brain activity. So beyond the fact that for a long time, many of us have just been able to tell, oh yes, I feel a whole lot better when I tap. We have the science now showing, yeah, there's something more than just people saying they feel better. Okay. I think that, you know, gives people a good idea of what tapping is. And we'll get to a little bit of a demonstration uh, later. But, um, you know, prior to you getting into tapping, and I, I believe you still are a hypnotherapist. So what brought you to hypnotherapy? Was there 
Did you go to a hypnotherapist yourself and have some transformative experience or what brought you to that? No, the funny thing is, is I had always been really interested in hypnotherapy and I had started reading about it when I was in high school, but I'd never been to a hypnotherapist and I was an actor. So I was, I toured the world doing theater, had gone to Hollywood to be a movie star as one does. Also, while I was in LA, I met a woman, fell in love and got married. And when our first child was on the way, I thought, you know, I should probably have a backup career. (laughs) And instead of getting a traditional dependable paycheck kind of job, I thought I'd seen an ad for this hypnotherapy school and thought, that sounds fascinating. I I love the, the power of the mind. Let me do that. And started building a small practice. I had studied acting in London, so I had this trained theatrical voice. So that was really beneficial for me as a hypnotherapist. Yeah. And it was cool because if my audience fell asleep, that was a good thing too. <laughs> so, so I was doing that for a while. And then after a couple of years, when our second child was on the way, I realized that as much as I loved acting, doing personal development work really felt like my calling. It's like, yeah, this is really what I'm here to do. And we left Los Angeles to move to Northern California to be closer to our families. And some other hypnotherapists were talking about this energy work and tapping and all this stuff. So I thought, oh, that sounds cool. Took a training with Gary Craig, the founder of EFT, Mm -hmm. and was just fascinated by this process. So after that weekend, I started introducing the tapping into my hypnotherapy sessions. And then little by little, they became tapping sessions. And I still do a little bit of hypnosis at the end of most of my sessions. How yeah. cool though, how it worked out. Like you just saw an opportunity to study hypnotherapy and then it led you to people introducing you to Gary Craig and emotional freedom technique. Yeah. I, I have been very blessed in being guided. And it's like, yeah. you know, my, my, what has worked for me is I have said yes to a lot of doors that have opened. Now, when you saw or heard that it was um, an energy technique, did you think it would be woo woo? I don't know that I, that I did. I, now, now I was, I had it easier coming in and having someone say, okay, today we're going to spend the day tapping on our face. Cause by this point I'd already been to Ringling Brothers Clown Collar. <laughs> this, you know, silly was no big deal for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had spent yeah. all day long in makeup juggling and stuff like that, yeah, okay. throwing pies. So tap a face. <laughs> hey, you piece of cake. <laughs> Um, okay. so, yeah. so I didn't, I was much, had a much easier, uh, threshold to cross than some people do. I have a question though, when it comes to tapping, is it best to do it when you're in say emotional distress or can you use it for prevention? How do you usually recommend someone? Use yeah, it? It's, it's great in both ways. So I recommend tapping on a daily basis. So I, I could say, so Don, what's the best time to take a shower when you, as a regular thing in every, each day as a maintenance thing, or only when you are really dirty? <laughs> right. Okay. That's a good analogy. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. To me, it, it's, it's energy hygiene, but with stress, it's constantly building up, but we tell ourselves, I'm fine. I'm fine. Mm. It's, it's so awesome. Whenever I, like when I, sometimes when I'm doing interviews and I'll be talking to someone and they're like, oh, I feel great. And we'll do a tapping around like, I feel more relaxed. I thought I was great. It's like, that's the thing is we are not aware of the ambient stress that we have. Most of us don't have a daily practice for clearing that stuff out. So definitely do it when, uh, when you feel that need as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I, at least that's how I use your, your videos. Um, yeah. At the end of the night, it's usually my favorite way to just cleanse. You know, you have a video on intuition. Um, do you have any uh, intuitive uh, abilities that you'd like to share or some spiritual superpowers beyond, you know, your tapping abilities? Well, to me, it is a very intuitive process. I don't know what I'm going to say when I start a tapping around. Usually even, ah. even with all the videos, I have lists of, I'll have ideas of, Oh, I should do a tapping video on that. And it may just be one word like intuition. And it's like, okay, let's see where this goes. Uh, even though I choose to be more intuitive, and if I did it again, it would be completely different. Hmm. So it, it comes through me, not from me. Uh, I'll say things and I will say, wow, that was brilliant. I wish I'd thought of it. <laughs> it's, not, it it's not me. I'll come up with metaphors that I've never thought of before because, I, you know, 
I'm being used in that way for, for service. And I'm, I'm just fortunate that I have a creative background as a cartoonist and as an actor that I already had training in, in being creative so that it just comes through me more easily. And while I'm tapping, I'm also clearing my resistance to that. But for the most part, it's just, it's just trusting the process because we're all, we're all channels for source, universe, God, however people want to say that. All creative acts are a matter of channeling something through us. And so I've just spent a lot of time, my superpowers that I allow myself to let it come through. That's so cool. I actually, I guess I just assumed that you had a script or, you know, certain points that you wanted to touch on for, you know, like the NLP format. Um, occasionally, occasionally I'll have, I'll, I'll have one or two phrases and like hypnotic languaging and NLP things that I've studied. I, I've had people say, oh yeah, we're, well, I mean, it's obviously obvious that you're an NLP master. It's like, no, I have a little bit of training in that, but the same stuff that came through Bandler and Grinder um, are the, is the stuff that can come through any of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. When you're doing your tapping with your clients or on the videos, you usually have us kind of take a breath, rate, tap, and then take another breath and reevaluate. Is that pretty much the, is that like a standard process? That's, that's the standard EFT process to try to find out what it is. Like, is it, how stressed do you feel at the moment on a scale of zero to 10? Oh, it's an eight. Okay. How do you physically feel about that? Eh, it's tension in my shoulders so that we can see where we're at at the beginning of the round and where we're at at the end of the round. So as we play with that, is there anything in particular you guys feel like uh, tapping on? I was thinking, I guess a, a general one would be fear since it keeps us from yeah. doing something yeah. with that. So, like would that work? Are we thinking of something else? No, no. I think fear, but how do we qualify it? Fear in general or just? Well, let's, let's do this. Everyone go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and hold it. And let it go. And just following your breath through your body, just allowing yourself to be right here, right now, as present as possible. Noticing what you're feeling physically and what you're feeling emotionally. And ask yourself, what would I do if I weren't afraid? If fear didn't stop me, what would I attempt? Would I, is there someone you'd ask out? Is there, would you start writing your book or finish your book? Would you make a YouTube video? <laughs> so, so just allowing yourself to be aware of Mm -hmm. what that what that might be and rating that fear on a scale as you're 10 notice where in your body you might feel it mm -hmm. notice what thoughts beliefs or memories might come up as to why you should be afraid and let's chip away what doesn't belong to reveal the masterpiece <laughs> so taking full responsibility for your own well-being if you choose to tap <laughs> oh yes <laughs> even though i had this fear choose to love and accept myself. Even though I have this fear, I choose to love and honor myself. Even though I have this fear and it is stopping me from doing stuff. And sometimes I'm not even aware that it's there. but I am aware that I'm stopping myself. And I choose to get curious about that and ask myself what I'm afraid of. And even though I feel this fear, I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who taught me to be afraid. They just didn't know any better. All this fear, all this fear that stops me. And sometimes I say, I don't have fear, but if I didn't have this fear, why am I not going 
waiting for it. Because I've got ideas about things I could do that would improve the quality of my life, that would improve the quality of other people's lives. And sometimes I know it's a great idea. And why am I not doing it? It's fear. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I'm bad or stupid. It's not because I'm weak or lazy. It's because I've got this old programming about how this wouldn't be safe for me. And it might not sound logical. Part of me might say, achieving my goal would be awesome. There's no possible downside to it. But if I really felt that through all of me, I'd probably get busier. <laughs> there are things that I would be doing that I'm not doing. And then I beat myself up for not doing them, which is a brilliant way of stopping myself. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go for those goals. As soon as I'm done beating myself up. Oh, look, we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to it tomorrow. And that's just me trying to protect myself. And I really love and appreciate myself for all the ways that I stop myself, believing that that's necessary to keep me safe. And as I allow myself to relax, I'm allowing myself to look at the things I'm afraid of and see if it's really that threatening or if it's just a misunderstanding from the past. Maybe mine and maybe somebody else's. Maybe someone told me to be afraid about this. And I just don't need to. And I can handle what happens. I can handle the consequences of success. I can handle whatever happens. I've already handled everything that's happened in my life. Maybe not always as gracefully as I would have liked, but some of it was pretty rough and I'm still here, which is proof that I handled it. So I choose to have more faith in myself and more faith in the universe so I can relax this fear. I can give myself more freedom to take action. I'm figuring this out. I'm allowing myself to take action. And I'm allowing myself to feel really good about that. I'm even allowing myself to enjoy being free. In body, mind, and in spirit. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes and think again about what you'd like to achieve. And just notice again on a scale of zero to 10 how much fear there might be. Notice where in your body you might've felt it before and hopefully that number's come way down. What a difference. At the beginning, I felt like my heart was racing a little bit mm -hmm. and then afterwards, nice and calm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. much. It was great meeting you. Thank, thank you for what you're doing and, and thank you for this opportunity to share this work. Uh, I, I know what a profound difference it can make for folks. And so by you giving a platform for people to be introduced to it, is awesome. And thank you to everyone who is willing to go through and try this strange looking process because 
as you clear away what doesn't belong, you reveal more of the masterpiece that's inside of you and that benefits the world. So uh, thank you for doing that. All right, thank you. All right, so I guess we'll sign off. Mm -hmm. um, so thanks everyone for tuning in to another episode of Spiritual Superpowers. If you like this video, make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss another episode. And then scroll down and click on all of Brad's links that we're gonna have there for you and just keep tapping, making the world a better place. Yes. <laughs> all right, bye-bye, thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.